Well, I was director of national intelligence uh, in the very early days uh, of of these issues, to uh, 2005, 2006, and of course, uh, it's almost a decade has gone by uh, since then. We had barely, as a government, established uh, a cyber command, for example. That was one of the steps that was taken. The president uh, decided to uh, create a four-star position uh, in the military uh, to uh, be responsible for uh, cyber operations, and that individual uh, eventually became dual-hatted with the uh, director uh, of, of NSA. So, so that certainly was one thing. The other uh, thing that we did was to try to improve the cyber capabilities of other parts of the government, because uh, up until recently, the NSA really had a monopoly on these kinds of issues, and the capabilities of the Department of Homeland Security, for example, the FBI, were all uh, much less than they are now. So I think what you see today is uh, the, the, the growth and the development of those capabilities so that cyber is really front and center uh, amongst the priorities of our government, whereas uh, a decade ago, I think it was a second order priority. We were still more concerned about uh, specific uh, uh, terrorist threats and state to state issues. Well, I, I think that probably uh, the greatest uh, cyber threats, uh, if you take the whole world, are really to human freedom because uh, not every country is uh, as enlightened uh, as the Western democracies about the use uh, of these media. So I think there are a lot of countries where people live uh, uh, without any assurance that all of their uh, communications uh, are being uh, monitored uh, all the time. So I, I would say that's the first threat. The second is to intellectual property, uh, and we've seen ample examples of that and uh, problems of uh, other countries and uh, state actors uh, trying to steal intellectual property from the United States, for example. And the last threat, although perhaps uh, potentially the most catastrophic, uh, but really I don't think has been uh, realized as yet, and that would be sort of genuine cyber attacks in the sense of uh, warfare against uh, infrastructure and uh, installations of one country or another. We just haven't seen much, if any, of that, but it's certainly a, a potential that is out there and uh, one that we have to think about. Well, uh, you noted that I placed that third in, in the hierarchy of threats. Uh, I don't think it's overhyped in one sense. You remember uh, Leon Panetta said, uh, someday we'll, uh, there's, a, there's a cyber Pearl Harbor out there. And the truth of the matter is, uh, well, there conceivably could be, because with effective tools, you could really do a lot of damage to infrastructure, for example, to uh, power plants or to hospitals uh, or to uh, uh, air traffic control systems. So it's not beyond imagination uh, that uh, these kinds of things uh, could occur. Uh, it's just that they haven't happened yet. Uh, countries have exercised restraint. And I also think that uh, while there's a, a feeling out there that some of these uh, kinds of attacks would be hard to attribute, I don't think you could mount a major attack. I don't think a nation, a state actor, could mount a major, major attack on a uh, major infrastructure of another country without uh, uh, being detected. Well, I think the crucial, well, first of all, there's an interdependence about cybersecurity that is just unavoidable since, for example, we talked about infrastructure, 80% of the infrastructure in the United States is in private hands, so inevitably there has to be a collaboration between uh, uh, government and private sector. The other thing is uh, the private sector has to be willing to take uh, the kinds of protective and defensive measures uh, uh, that are appropriate to minimizing the potential, potential damage of uh, cyber uh, attacks. 
Uh, and uh, there's been a, a certain amount of effort in the U.S. to pass legislation to this effect, but so far uh, it hasn't succeeded. The other area where I think the private sector can really, uh, and that's where we all count on the private sector, is its inventiveness, uh, its uh, ability to invent new technologies that will help us uh, defend ourselves better. Well, first of all, there's no other way in uh, Western democracies, uh, including our own, uh, to thoroughly air important uh, public policy issues unless there's a partnership between the public and the private sectors because uh, governments uh, cannot make policies uh, in a vacuum and more and more, uh, the private sector plays uh, a role in both uh, the formulation, the articulation of policies, uh, and uh, in their uh, implementation. So I felt that uh, Concordia was uh, an excellent example of an organization uh, that could help uh, our country and, and others uh, going forward in articulating uh, prominent uh, public policy issues of concern uh, to our citizenry. I think that people often uh, like to say that perhaps the most uh, pressing uh, national security issue confronting the United States is that we have an economy uh, that, is in, that is sufficiently healthy that we are able as a nation to continue to bear the global uh, responsibilities that we have done heretofore. Uh, to my way of thinking, that means uh, putting the uh, financial crisis uh, that we went through back in 2007, 8, and 9 uh, behind us uh, to get particularly our budget and our deficit uh, situation in proper order. It can't be solved overnight, but I think we could uh, if we had a agreement uh, in Washington, and I don't despair of that, if we had agreement in Washington, we could put the budget and the, uh, on a glide path uh, to some kind of uh, reducing the deficit to uh, a tolerable level, say two or three percent of the economy. That has to be the goal. I don't doubt that we can achieve it because I think that uh, deficit spending and the financial problems that we went through in the last few years uh, have become a concern of just about everybody uh, in uh, our country. And uh, I'm, I'm not uh, so pessimistic about the issue of, of gridlock. I think that uh, you, you can see a, a sort of a convergence on the center that's taking place, even in these primaries that we've just uh, been through. And I think that uh, the country is moving towards a sort of a middle of the road uh, path. As far as what public-private partnerships can do to help on these issues, well, every bit of public dialogue, every bit of conversation that stresses uh, the importance of putting uh, our public finances uh, in order so that we can continue to play the role we've played in the past around the world, uh, I think is to the good.